Jason Jalkowski was born on June the 24th, 1981. At the time he disappeared, he was a part-time student in the radio broadcasting program at Iowa Western Community College in Council Bluffs, Iowa, and worked at a local Fazoli's restaurant. Jason was six foot one in height and had a keen interest in sports and had an exceptional knowledge when it came to sports statistics. Jason had mild learning difficulties when it came to speech. However, he was still above average intelligence. It was reported he planned to eventually become a radio DJ. Jason was also just about to start a new job as a customer service representative at Seitel Corporation. Jason's mother would describe him as a shy, quiet boy with only a small handful of friends. On June the 13th, 2001, Jason received a phone call from his boss at the Fazoli's restaurant. He could tell from the background noise on the phone that it was a busy day there. He wasn't scheduled to go into work until 5.30 to work the dinner shift. However, his boss wanted to know if he could come in early to help with the lunch shift as well. Normally, Jason jumped at the chance to earn some extra money, but a recent storm had damaged his car and it was currently in the repair shop. Both of his parents were also at work. He told his boss that he would have to walk to the restaurant, however his boss told him that he could send one of his co-workers to pick him up. Rather than try to give directions to his house, Jason arranged to meet his co-worker in the parking lot of the local high school at 11am. Before he started the 10 minute walk to the school at 10.45am, Jason was last seen by a neighbour who witnessed him helping his younger brother pull trash cans from the cab back to the house. Jason had graduated from Benson High School two years before, so this is a route that he walked hundreds of times. One of Jason's neighbours saw the teenager at 10.45 as he walked away from his home and continued down the quiet residential street. The walk to the school would normally take Jason about 10 minutes, so he had ample time to get there to meet his co-worker at 11am, yet he never made it that far. Jason's co-worker sat in the parking lot at Benson High School until about 11.15am. She then left and drove a few blocks to the closest gas station. She used a payphone there to call the restaurant and tell her boss that Jason hadn't shown up. She wasn't sure if she should keep waiting or not. He told her to wait for a few more minutes to see if Jason would show up, but he never did. Knowing they were already short-staffed, she returned to the restaurant at 11.30 to continue her shift. The manager tried to call Jason at home, but his younger brother answered and said that Jason was already at work. Jason's parents, Jim and Kelly Jalkowski, were immediately concerned. Their son was simply not the type of person to skip work on a whim. They immediately began calling all of their son's friends to see if any of them had heard from him, but no one had. Believing that they had to wait at least 24 hours before reporting their adult son missing, they spent a sleepless night hoping he would walk through the door. When morning came with no sign of Jason, they called the police and reported him missing. Incredibly, it would take the police 10 days before they started investigating this case. Detectives interviewed everybody who was associated with Jason. All his co-workers, friends, neighbours and relatives were questioned multiple times and investigators were confident that none of them had any knowledge of Jason's disappearance. Police conducted a door-to-door -door search along the route that Jason would have taken to get from his house to the school, hoping to find someone who remembered seeing something unusual the day he went missing. One neighbour saw Jason as he left his driveway and walked down the street, but detectives were unable to find anyone else who saw Jason that day. His trail literally ended the moment he left his own front door. 
Investigators combed through surveillance footage from cameras at both Benson High School and the neighbouring middle school, but Jason would never appear on any of the footage. It was clear that he never made it as far as the school. Unfortunately, there were no other surveillance cameras in the area, so it's unknown exactly how close he might have gotten to his destination before he actually disappeared. The case has been especially frustrating for detectives because there is simply no evidence at all. Nothing has been found to indicate that foul play took place, but there is nothing to suggest that Jason left voluntarily. There has essentially been no leads for police to follow up and very, very few tips were ever received. What is so perplexing about this case is none of the usual missing person theories seem to fit. He was not the kind of person to run away from home and start a new life. He had very little money and virtually no personal possessions with him when he left for work that day. His car was in the repair shop. His bank accounts have never been touched and his social security number has never been used. Jason had no problems with drink, no problems with drugs, no problems in his personal life. It appears that Jason just vanished into thin air.